In Matthew chapter number seven, Yeshua in the Temple Mount speaking or the Sermon on the Mount speaking says <laughs> that we should be focused on building our homes or our lives on a rock and not a sand. That actually foundations mean something. They matter. It's foundations for life with Barry Phillips, myself, and with the Rabbi Reverend Dr. Pastor <laughs> Apostle Mike Clayton, who has all of the answers, then that's why he's on this program. Yes. Mike, how are you today? You look all uh, official and professional in your studio setting. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm feeling kind of blue. <laughs> 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 I actually bought a new shirt. So well, it's about that, time, the, you know. We got, I know it is. Uh, it's, it's one of the most difficult things. You understand this. You do the 10 minute tour every day. That uh you know, I do four programs every week now that are on video. Uh one of them's not quite up yet, other podcast is coming out. And it's like, okay, what shirt did I wear last last <laughs> week? And what you know, what shirt was I just wearing the day before? So uh yeah, it's a little bit crazy. And and and, and you know. Uh, Barry, you did speak truth there. Okay. Because, uh, I can answer any question. Okay. There's not a question out there in the universe that I cannot answer. Uh, the answer may be, I don't know, but I, I can answer it. So. <laughs> well, I mean, do you want, you want truth or you want me to make up something that'll make you feel good? Yeah. <laughs> I, I used to tell people that and I was teaching and they say, are you sure that's right? I said, well, you want the truth or you want me to make you feel good? Yeah, yeah. I can uh, tell you what you want to hear. Yeah, yeah. If you if you want to know what you, you know, kind of want what you want to hear, there's a, there's a guy out of Texas that you can tune into his uh, television program every oh week. And uh, uh, as, as a friend of mine said, uh, he's Pastor Feel Good. And so, uh, <laughs> you know, it's... Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. So back to the original, Mike, <laughs> if we were to, if we were to examine our foundations, now you can buy, I remember many years ago, uh, a man, uh, a fellow pastor way back when uh, gave me a connection to a particular wholesaler of books and they offered, you know, commentaries, commentary series, sets, and so forth. And one of the things, one of the, the commentary sets that was available was Church Fathers, early Church Fathers. Oh, boy. And you can buy these extensive volumes that were written by Luther or Christendom or, you know, Ignatius, whoever he was, all of those guys, early Church Fathers. And you can read what they postulated. So one might talk about, you know, the church needs to get back to the book of Acts again. Um, the problem with getting back to a book of Acts church, quote unquote, is what we call church didn't start in the book of Acts. It started way back earlier than that. Well, Yacht calls these yeah. people out to Mount Sinai and, and Exodus or Shemot 19 and says, now I've brought you out. You are my peculiar people. You are mm -hmm. a set apart nation to me. Mm -hmm. So the call, the called out ones, we have we have heard the voice of the Ruach of Kodesh, the Holy Spirit, many of us, wherever it was that we were. Many of us asked the, the very famous question, is this all that there is? I thought I was the only one that ever asked that until I heard everyone else talk about to ask the same question. Yeah. And so we started looking for the answer to that question, which led us back uh, to an ancient past and to a return to following his commands. Oftentimes, however, I feel like, at least in the, this is my personal experience, I came out on a foundation that was in part laid with stones of anger and resentments, and suspicions, and conspiracy theories, and angst about denominations, yeah. and accusations that I, you know, and then uh, 
the government's out to get us. You got to build a bunker and run for the mountains and all of that stuff. I mean, it was, in, you know, just after Y2K, there was a lot of flimsy mm -hmm. theories floating around in those mm -hmm. days. Did we replace the faults in our foundation to have a solid building or do we have some issues that we need to go back? Is it, could it be that the house that we're wanting to become the house of Joseph is not constructing more significantly because Yah is wanting us to test our foundations first. Okay. L let me take, let me take a few stabs at this thing. Uh, first of all, of course, I would take exception with, uh, you know, we need to get back to the church in the book of Acts because, and I, and I know how you, you contexted that, but uh, there's one thing that the body of Messiah has never been called by Elohim. And that is a church. Uh, there's another thing that he's ne that he's never called the body of the Messiah, and that is an ecclesia. Uh, one of them being a German uh, deprivation, a, a German uh, root, and the other one being Greek. And uh, he has never called us either one of those. No, uh, the assembly, the kahal, various words that are used there, uh, which have some incredible meaning. So if you're wanting to get back to the church in the book of Acts, uh, that is going to be, if you're trying to buy that book of, uh, you know, the title is Let's Get Back to the Church in the Book of Acts, you'll be looking in the fiction section, <laughs> okay? Because it Tell never Tell me how existed. you feel there, Mike. <laughs> yeah, it's just, okay, you know, that's it. Uh, I see posts on on Facebook of, you know, uh, you know, well, well, what would Jesus have done? Well, he probably used his right name. What would the church do? Well, it'd get, you know, okay, here, here's where I'm going with this, Barry. I told a story uh, not too long ago about a, um, uh, a community. It was a, a relatively you know, small community, but uh, a, a number of generations back, a, a number of years back, uh, they had a local trash dump. Now, this was a place back in, you know, in those days, you, you kept pretty much brought everything, you know, your antifreeze, your, your batteries, your oil, everything was thrown into this garbage dump. Uh, very toxic, extremely toxic. So the, uh, the, the government came along, and as the town was growing, they decided that they were going to seal this off. So in some way, however they did, uh, however you do kind of the, those things, I don't understand it. They literally sealed the ground. So the toxic fumes, the methane gas, all of those things would be, uh, would not be able to come through the soil. Uh, a, a couple of generations went by and they decided to build a high school. Well, hey, here's a piece of land. And nobody really thought about it. So they built this high school on top of this uh, this this piece of ground, and all of a sudden the uh, the students are getting sick, the teachers are getting sick, the employees are getting sick, and they found out that there was that that land had developed a crack. So that crack was allowing methane gas and other toxic fumes to come through. And they had to go back in and reseal that. I believe that the person said eventually closed the school down. Uh, when Yeshua talks about building our house on a firm foundation, you can build the best foundation in the world. But if you build it on toxic ground, eventually that which is underneath the foundation is going to break through. Okay, is that where maybe we find ourselves in the in America? Maybe we find ourselves in Messianic Hebrew roots communities. Uh, a friend of mine just went to Mount Rushmore, and you know I've I've been there. It's a beautiful place. You're you're standing there marveling over the, you know these these images that have been carved into these rocks. And this is, you know, this is America. Yes, this is the, the the symbol of America, of these four men that are they're, they're the face, the, the images are, are carved into this rock. 
But what about the foundation that was that provided that? Which it was a sacred place for Native Americans honoring some of their leaders. So if you if you dig past the surface, all of a sudden you find out that there's some methane gas here. Uh-huh. Keep breathing it. It's going to poison you. Eventually, you have to tear it down. You have to move on. You have to you have to figure out where I built. I might have built my house on a solid foundation, but I chose bad ground. So some of the stones in this foundation, I mean, Yeshua lays a perfect foundation. He himself being the chief cornerstone, Scripture says. If we're going to lay additional stones in the foundation with the chief cornerstone, they have to have the same integrity as his stone. Okay. So when we start laying stones of our own choice, our own doctrines, our own preferences, our own designs, the foundation becomes suspect. You know, we are we're we hear a lot of commercials about, you know, are there cracks in your foundation? If so, that you know, this is a company can come and shore mm-hmm. up your house and fix your mm-hmm. foundation. Yeah. I've had that done, yeah. Why? Um, because there was there was problems underneath. Yeah. Well, here locally, you know, where we live, about two miles down the road is a sand mine. And part of the sand mining operation is to go deep in the earth, set off explosive charges and break up the ground underneath so that the water comes up. You pump up, pump out the water and you're left with sand. Mm-hmm. You can get out. The thing is, even two miles away, when they set off those charges, my whole house will shake. Oh, yeah. And so, you know, it's I haven't seen cracks in my foundation. Cracks in the wall, uh, the uh, the walls, yes. Mm-hmm. You know, so anyway, those things, Mike, there are some explosive charges that can set off. How many, how many um, debates have gone on that fractured things we're trying to build we're trying to create a quality um an edifice of integrity Mm -hmm. something that reflects the foundation of yeshua and we keep hitting you know a bad pun is a brick wall we keep hitting Mm -hmm. a, a spot we can't build any further Okay. Well, we may say, well, you know, I wasn't a part of any of the foundational issues. I just got here. So what do I have to do? I read a text yesterday, and it'll show up in 10 Minute Torah on Friday. And in regard to um, a situation where someone uh, is found dead in a field. Okay. And no one knows who who may have slain the individual. No one is knowingly at fault. Yah still requires the leadership of the local community, their elders, their judges, and ultimately the Levites, to perform a ceremony, a ritual, where they basically wash their hands of any malice or guilt in this, and it says in chapter 21, verse 8 of the book of Deuteronomy, Devering, that they pray this prayer. O Yahweh, forgive your people Israel, whom you have ransomed, and do not allow innocent blood in the midst of your people Israel, and the blood guilt shall be pardoned to them. What that tells me is if people will genuinely acknowledge while we didn't have anything to do with splits, factions, fractions, Mm -hmm. issues, and faulty foundation stones, we are nonetheless a part of this. We take ownership and we repent and ask you, O Yah, 
to forget. We don't want to sweep this garbage under our rug. We don't want to pretend that it doesn't matter. We want a quality foundation. We're asking you to forgive whatever was done, even though it wasn't by our hands. Okay. Would that be significant enough that we would see a generating of energy from the Ruach to promote growth? Mm -hmm. So here, here's a question along those lines. I, I think this might tie in. Uh, there's a there's a concept in Israel that you you're well aware of. It's called a tell, T E L. Uh, we have Tel Aviv, we have Tel Dan, we have Tel Megiddo, uh, various things you could look into Native American culture. And uh, right here in Franklin, we have an, a a Native American mound, um, which is now owned by the Eastern Band of the Cherokee, I believe it is. A tell is when you build civilization on top of another civilization. When you, and tell Megiddo, I can't remember how many civilizations they have have figured out. Uh, when we go down to Tamar, you've been there with me, there are numerous civilizations. And what they do is you, know, you go in, there's a, there's a civilization you uh you, you you know you're wanting to take over so what do you do you kill everybody and you destroy all the buildings well uh let's just take the rubble from those those buildings and let's rebuild and bring in new new rocks and so after years you have layer upon layer after, upon layer uh this is this this is similar to what you're saying of uh at some point in time, you have to acknowledge the sin of the layers. Yes. You have to repent from the sin of the layers. You have to move your building. You have to move your civilization. It's no longer good enough to simply build on top of the sins of prior generations. Uh, one uh, teacher years ago said and got in a lot of trouble for this so i'm going to go ahead and say it again <laughs> and uh, that is that in in modern christianity we have catholicism and protesting catholicism yes okay uh protestant is basically the word means protest so it is the uh martin luther uh, various ones that came out of Catholicism and basically built another house on top of what they came out of. But there was problems. Mm -hmm. There was problems underneath. I guess my question is this, has the Messianic Hebrew Roots movement done the same thing? Uh, basically just built another layer instead of understanding. So, Okay, the picture is this that I get, Barry. Is the foundation that has been built, which is now called Messianic Hebrew Roots, if we were to go down to the original civilization that is under our building, would we truly found, find Mount Sinai? Or would we find Rome? Oh, <laughs> that's well. I mean, that's the crux of the matter. So let, let me let me throw one. Let me throw one more. Let me throw one more little thing at it. Okay. This, okay, this apostle, just, doctor, pastor, rabbi, Mike, go ahead. <laughs> let, let's just throw one more. So, what if we were to take the stones? of Mount Sinai and build the civilization on top of Rome. May 2002, praying in the backyard, Yah specifically told me, do not recreate what you come out of. Yeah. And the way I've tried to explain that to people kind of looked at me like, what do you mean? 
when I came out of the denominational structure that I left at his instruction, in a way of saying it, don't go down to the end of the parking lot and start all over again. So my 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 means of operation after that, when we officially left, which is all, you know next in two weeks will be twenty years. Yeah. If the church did it, I was not going to do it. So I remember our first gathering. It came time in the operation of being together that normally you would pass a plate. And I stopped. I was getting ready to say, let's take an offering, receive an offering. And I stopped. Yeah. And I realized, wait a minute, wait a minute. We're not going to do that anymore. And from that first day, I have refused to stand there and count or ask anyone, keep a record of our attendance mm -hmm. because it doesn't matter. I don't, I don't want to know the numbers. There were people in the room. I want to focus on people being there. I don't care how many is there. There are times that it was less than 10. There were times that it's been, you know, 70 or 80, you know, and it's, it's fluctuated all over the place. How many was there last week? I don't know. I didn't count. And to my knowledge, no one else did. There's no official record keep. We don't have a membership role. If you say I'm a member of House of David, uh, that's interesting. I'm not a member. I'm yeah. the leader, a uh, congregational leader, but we don't have a membership role. We don't need one. We're a family. I know who's there. I know these people. And their name doesn't have to be on an official list. Is that enough? No, because I can get away from the mechanics of operation and still have the same mindset and same heart that I had trying to fulfill hierarchy expectations of me and cater to boards and committees in order to see a function of an organization. Um, getting rid of someone because you quote unquote don't follow the rules whatever the rules mm -hmm. might be so it's easy Mike to, to change the mechanics it's the heart that can be an issue yeah because you still are it's still based upon the, the, the system the, the, the Roman system uh, Explain that, that is, what, what qualifies the Roman system. What is that? Okay, I, I I go back to Constantine. I go back to Marcion. Uh, these are the people that gave us the system, which basically, you know, Marcion said we don't need the God of the Old Testament anymore. He came up with his his own kind of thing. Uh, that is that is still prevalent very much. Uh, the Nicene Council, in which the uh, the biblical festivals of which we are about to enter into, were replaced by uh, things like you know Christmas and Easter and and all of these other things. Uh, Sunday, you know, Shabbat changed from Saturday to Sunday. But you can go to Shabbat service on Saturday on Shabbat. Uh, but then, say, well, you know, it's it's okay. I mean, it's it, it's just my, it, it, it's just, it, well, it's kind of a gray area. And, you know, I mean, everybody else is just doing what they think is right. And, you know, no, no, no. you know for me, Shabbat is Shabbat, period. Um, the feasts are the feast, period. I, I don't want to have anything to do with any of the things, the trappings that were, that came out of Constantine and Marcion, which was basically in the end was a control of people. Mm -hmm. So what is the heart of Catholicism? 
what is the what has been built upon that is the control of people okay i think you probably have hit on the key difference controlling people versus growing people yeah i think that when we preach teach the scriptures through the filter of the torah revealing yeshua as the living embodiment of the torah and the messiah declared in the torah getting people back to yah in his commands grows them and matures them mm -hmm. as opposed to these are the rigid rules that you have to obey in order to be a part of our group or else you're out mm -hmm. i'm writing this down by the way <laughs> so when you hear this again folks know where you got it from <laughs> the, but the 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 thing is years and years ago when still pastoring i was seeking the father for what curriculum curriculum do I use for practical Christian discipleship? And I looked at navigators. I looked at, you know, Nelson. I looked at, you know, all the, the publishing houses and their variety of materials. Good stuff. And, you know, there was some quality in some of it, but it was like, this is not it. I mean, this just doesn't fit who we are and what we're trying to become. No, no, and no. When I started teaching the Torah, I did so while still a pastor, and I did it safely on Wednesday night when the crowd was smaller, and I used them as a better taste, uh, test audience. Just teaching the tenets of the Torah on a very simplistic, basic way I mean, I, I was just learning it myself. But, you know, I'd always preach a lot out of the, quote, unquote, the Old Testament. But now I'm following it systematically through and began to see the patterns. Mm -hmm. People were excited. Their eyes were open. Their mouth was open. It's like, I never, never knew. I never thought about it that way. You know, it was interesting. It was productive. And the spirit of Yah was speaking to me, son, this is your discipleship program. This is the way you grow and mature people. Teach mm -hmm. them the Torah. It's the concept of Isaiah, line upon line, precept upon precept. I remember a Wednesday night at Mountain View Nazarene Church in Tucson, Arizona, when uh, the associate pastor got up and spoke on that verse. And it was like, yeah, that's, that's it. Line upon line, precept upon precept. One of the most uh, uh, influential Bible teachers of the probably 60s, 70s, uh, program still on. I would disagree with a lot of his theology, but one of the most influential was J. Vernon McGee. Get on the Bible bus. And he would teach through the scriptures in five years, line upon line, precept upon precept. Again, I would today disagree with a lot of things he said, but the concept of opening the scripture, expounding on the scripture, and then as, as as and then allow it's like the the father taking the words, planting the seed in a person, and then letting it grow. Instead of doctrine, which is about control. So yeah, I I think it's uh, there. That's a something to uh to consider you know you might find a thought for the day coming out of something like that that i put on facebook i don't know but uh you know religion is about control so we got about five minutes here i'm gonna throw a bomb in the water uh oh so you'll have to answer quick for some building the foundation meant going back to judaism or becoming jewish well, we're going to have, you know, this this element of liturgy and we're going to do this uh, synagogue style practice because it gives us legitimacy. We don't trust the church system anymore and we don't know who we are in the middle anymore. So we're going to go back to Judaism 
and its functions and designs so that we at least have something credible to stand on. Uh, there's nothing wrong with being Jewish. There's nothing wrong with uh, attending a synagogue in many respects. Um, there's a lot to be learned from rabbinical writings, but Mike, are we supposed to lay Judaism as our foundation? Okay, I'm going to take the bait four minutes do something really stupid. <laughs> I was probably the one thing that somebody accused me of that, that was the most outstanding thing anyone could accuse me of in the world is that I was anti-Semitic. Uh, I, I don't know a Jew that would, that would, that would, uh, that, that would say that. Okay. So uh, that's ridiculous, but here goes. As Christianity is built on a foundation of Rome, much of modern-day Judaism is built on a foundation of the Babylonian captivity and the time after the destruction of the temple. Both need to come back to Mount Sinai. I'm green. That being said, qualifier there are many many practicing christians many many observant jews who are good moral and yeah. arguably righteous people who are walking to the best of their knowledge and their understanding and no one, including Mike and myself, has the right to say they are going one place or the other in eternity. We're not the judge. There's only one. And um, I so want this to, is not carte blanche yeah. criticism of anyone in either system or the affirmation and the elevation of everyone who is thought mm -hmm. to be in the middle as if we have found some super superior moral ground. Let me say it like this. I am not attacking any individual. I am, however, attacking foundations that have been laid that are not the foundation of the scripture. And I do that in my own life, usually on a daily basis. I want to question my own foundation. And if in the process of that, it causes some very difficult decisions for my own life. So be it. Well, folks, we definitely expect some commentary <laughs> and response on this one. Uh, we appreciate your comments. We appreciate you very much watching. And if you're bold enough to share in your social media <laughs> or email a link to somebody say, you need to watch this, uh, have at it. And uh, we'll forward all your questions to Rabbi Apostle Dr. <laughs> Pastor Mike, and he will give a great answer. Maybe even saying, "I don't know." So, if you, uh, yeah, if you, if you, if you share it on your social media, you can always tag it as "Listen, to these two village idiots." <laughs> <laughs> see well, you, Barry. We'll see you again next week, folks. Thank you for watching today. To the shalom.